Here are the first things you should learn when you start learning a language. I'm talking day one. Here is a list of verbs that I think are the most useful verbs to learn when you're first learning a language. These languages also have a conjugation system that you'll also want to learn for each of these verbs. It comes down to tenses, just focus on the present tense when you get started. Next, learn these five phrases in your target language. Excuse me, can you help me? I would like. There is. I'm sorry, I don't speak blank or I don't understand. Lastly, how do you say X? My biggest piece of advice is think about being in a place where you don't speak the language and what you'll need to say to survive. Conversation comes later. Personally, I don't even bother with introductions until a bit later because I know I'm not going to get to use that until I can actually converse. When learning vocabulary, learn vocabulary that you'll actually need to use. There is no reason why you need to learn how to say the word shoe on your first day, but like bathroom, train station, very important. Hope this helps and like for part two. <laughs>consider when choosing which language to learn next from a polyglot. Number one, the difficulty of the language. If you've never studied a foreign language before, outside maybe school, it's probably a good idea to start with an easier one. This will make for a much more rewarding start, and in the process you also just get generally better at learning languages, making you readier for taking on bigger challenges. The Foreign Language Institute has a ranking by difficulty of the most commonly learned languages, although this is only for native English speakers. Number two, your motivation. Motivation is the biggest predictor of success in language learning, so I really recommend that before you take up a new language, you lay out the reasons why you want to be able to speak and understand it, maybe with a friend or a language partner. And number three, the availability of resources. If you're interested in a language that's not that popular, it can actually be pretty hard to find resources, so really be mindful of that when you pick your next language. Follow for more language tips. This is my most favorite trick to learn languages. Nobody really talks about it, but hmm, I guess it works after six languages. It's still counting. <laughs> it's also known as the Disney lover method. Named it. You gotta watch Disney TV shows with people, not animation, in the language that you want to learn with the subtitles of the language that you want to learn. No other subtitles. This is practically brainwashing. They're overacting. I'm sorry, Disney, I love you. They're overacting so much. They're like, I love you. Like, you will understand everything by the context and it just brainwashes you into understanding the language. Easy, effortless, and feast. That I started learning my seventh language because thanks, Monskin, I regret nothing. <laughs> Here's the formula to learn the foundations of the language in under just two weeks instead of browsing through textbooks years and years on end. And you basically have to Google this, pause the video. It's the 80-20 rule or the Pareto principle of language learning. These words make 20% of the language, however, they're used 80% of the time. Just translate it into your native language, you don't have to study it, just read it. And now that you've got them, start with the TV shows. Bye. How to learn Japanese at home. Start with the basics. Hiragana and katakana are the very basic foundations of the Japanese language, so the quicker you know them, the faster you can progress with your Japanese. Use recommended resources. There are many platforms out there, including Hiragana Quest for Hiragana, Wanikani for Kanji, and Anki for creating flashcards to study with. Take online courses. You get a structured course, course materials, and support from actual Japanese teachers. Set learning goals. Make sure your goals are realistic, measurable, and attainable. The underrated language learning tip that's going to completely change your life. Play your favorite video game in the target language. Bear with me because this is really smart. If you're as obsessed with The Sims as I am, you know what all of these mean in English, but now you can learn what they all are in Spanish. You're so expert at the game that you might not have recognized these phrases in another context, but you do because you know The Sims so well. You know that this is to be friendly, you know that this is to form a group, be romantic or mean, and now you've learned that that would be mezquino, romantico, amistoso. Now, I've just learned the Spanish for a rejected first kiss. Es triste que a un sim le rechacen un primer beso. Muy triste. One of my first videos ever was about how to learn Spanish with Netflix and I recommended this life-changing Chrome extension.
and I was super excited to notice that it's been revamped. It's now called Language Reactor, and apart from Netflix, it also works on YouTube. So you can watch YouTube videos in your target language with double subtitles. And just like before, you can click on any word to see the meaning, which is really helpful for filling in those vocabulary gaps. If you like this, follow for more language learning tips. Here's a hack for those of you who are learning or want to learn French, Spanish, or Italian. You have to download this Chrome extension called Fluent. You can find it on the Chrome Web Store. And add it to Chrome, but I already have. And once it's downloaded, you have to pin it like this. Now this right here is the deck with all the new words that you've learned. And it sets goals for you. So when you're reading anything online, it'll highlight words for you to learn. And when you hover your mouse over the word, you basically discovered it. And it adds it to your deck in familiar words. And then if you ever see the word again somewhere else, you'll see it with a blue dot. And this time it actually tests you. And the next time you see it, it'll be in English. And it will test you again. And to really make sure that you have it in your head, it'll test you one more time with a green dot beside it. And this time you have to type the word. And now I've completed this word and I could see my progress right here. And if you have to focus on something else, you can easily turn it off. It's so cool. Try it out and don't forget to follow for more tips. Three tips on learning a language. Number one, anything you do in life, mindset. Make sure you have it in your mindset that you will learn it. You will conquer it. Number two, expect to sound like an idiot. You're not going to sound fluent. You're not going to sound like a native probably within the first three to six, maybe even a year. And number three, it's gonna take some time for the dust to settle. Meaning that all the information that you've learned, phrases, vocabulary, it's gonna take time for that to settle in your brain to apply those correct sayings or correct words at the appropriate time. Hi everyone, so quick speed run on how I'm learning Japanese. First are these flashcards I got off of Amazon. You can use an expo worker on them, they're really helpful. Next is this workbook I found. It has a CD and you can follow along and listen and work in it. This one is more like a dictionary where you can kind of learn more about the words and specific words. It helps. This one is my favorite because it's elementary level, so it's a lot more simple for beginners like myself. Next is my most favorite and how you guys know me. It's getting Japanese manga and translating it. Now for the apps. I like Lingo Zero, but it can get a little pricey sometimes, but it works wonders. No brainer is Duolingo. I like how it's simple and it doesn't really feel like you're learning. This app works too, but most importantly, have a notebook and write down everything you learn so you can kind of get the idea of how writing it works. I also like YouTube because I can watch something I'm interested in, but also learn at the same time. It's so much fun. How to sound more natural when you're talking in Spanish? Try this. Avoid pausing after each word. It sounds weird. We don't do that in English. Why would you do it in Spanish? Instead, try linking your words. I'll give you an example. This sentence over here. Vas a ir al aeropuerto. Nobody would actually say it like that. We would say, vas a ir, vas a ir. See what I'm doing? Vas a ir al aeropuerto, al aeropuerto. All together, vas a ir al aeropuerto. Does that make sense? language learners should be doing. First of all, keep a tracker of regular things you do in English, like reading 10 pages in English every day or watching a video a day. You can also have a year-long tracker. Second, train your listening skills by listening to popular songs and filling in the gaps. You can find this exercise in my workbook. Number three, learn new words by reading Instagram posts by your favorite celebrities. Don't forget to write them down. Number four, when learning English tenses, learn signal words. They are the ones that would help you memorize which tense to use and when. And finally, number five, did you know that a verb can change its meaning completely when it's followed by a preposition? Well, now you know. These are called phrasal verbs and they're very important, so please, please learn them. If you are wondering where I got this workbook from, you know where to look for a PDF version of it. Three tips to learn any language fast. Have someone to hold you accountable, your friend, your sister, or your tutor. And remember, it's not about how long, it's about how often. 
Be specific about what, when, and how you are planning to